This is a news story from back in March. Why am I bringing it up now? Because Infinity's QX80, which has a over $100,000 sticker price, it's hitting yeah. dealer lots right about now. Dad, back yeah. in March, Infinity announced that they were going to be coming out with an $8,300 price increase, bringing yeah. the base model of their QX60 up to $84,445. Multiple trim options of the QX60 now started over $100,000, the top trim with options can get up to more than $115,000. This is for a brand that is struggling mightily in the United States. The answer when profits are down, when they go low, we go yeah. high. You go price. high, you raise them prices. Uh, and especially after Infinity said, we're no longer going to try and be a luxury brand. Okay, so in accordance with not trying to be a luxury brand, we're going to price some of our vehicles at the same level as the Jeep Grand Wagoneer. So, so expensive, man. My, my hope is that that these Infinity dealers also own a Jeep dealership, <laughs> and they can park the Grand Wagoneers and these new uh, QX80s next to each other, and they get, see what happens if they crossbreed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look at this, dude. I'll pull it up on the screen right now. Look at this first page of results when you search on CarEdge.com for Infinity QX80. There's two thousand two hundred ninety-one of them. I mean, this is lunacy, man. Um, You know, if if you can afford the Infinity, then you can afford the Lexus, and you're probably better off with the Lexus than you are the Infinity. $100,000 um, Nissan, no thank you, LOL. I mean, that's what you're buying. You're buying a Nissan. Yeah, exactly. It, that that that's exactly right and you know and people that are looking to spend that kind of money escalate denali um so the, maybe 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 a lincoln um a, a bmw of some kind the x7 um a mercedes benz but the, Nobody in their right mind is spending one hundred thirteen thousand dollars and walking out of an infinity store with one vehicle. I mean, why would you do that if you could if you can afford to spend that kind of money, go spend it on a real car. <laughs> we got another strike potentially happening. Workers at General Motors Fort Wayne pickup plant vote to authorize strike. That hourly workers at GM's pickup plant in Indiana have voted to authorize a strike over staffing issues including a previous decision to move some employees to different shifts, but a strike is not guaranteed. The local union would meet with GM to attempt to resolve issues before a strike would happen. The chairman of UAW Local 2209 said before the October 30th vote, 2209 represents Fort Wayne Assembly, which builds light-duty versions of the Silverado and GMC Sierra. So there you go, Dad. We've got another potential strike happening, which, if I'm not mistaken, the Silverado and the GMC Sierra are oversupplied right now, so that'd be actually kind of a good thing <laughs> for General Motors. But yeah, I, there you go, man. I, I think globally, if you look at what's going on, and uh, we know that Volkswagen has issues, um, there was just a report today in, in automotive news about Stellantis having huge issues now in Europe as yep. well as in North America with an oversupply of product in both areas that the word strike is a wonderful word. It really is. But if, if more and more manufacturers are struggling with selling the product that they've already built with um, creating and maintaining profit margins that will allow them to be around for years and years to come, um, it, it might be a word that during these tougher times for some of these auto manufacturers, it might be a word that we just take out of our vocabulary for the short term and and, and just be thankful that we actually uh, have a job um, and maybe the production can, can remain at, at a high enough level that it can employ uh, a high enough number of people. But it's... Legacy automotive is having a tough time globally at the moment. And the only thing I would suggest is that workers take that into consideration when they're making whatever type of demands workers want to make. Interesting. All right. Not the take I was expecting from Pops, but there you go. He can surprise us. 
from time to time. Yeah, Dad, I want to remind now and then, Every now and then, I, I'm full of surprises. What you need to know about the Chinese EV loved by Ford CEO and why you can't get it in the U.S. Ford CEO Jim Farley has been driving a Chinese electric vehicle, the Xiaomi Speed Ultra 7, for the past six months, and he loves it. You're talking about how Ford might look different in the future? Maybe it's one of these Chinese automakers that comes in and takes them out. The CEO of Ford absolutely loves his Xiaomi, and forgive me if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, EV dad, been driving it for six months, obviously doing competitive intelligence there. But at six months, you're no longer just doing competitive intelligence. You like the damn thing more than your own Mach-E. Uh, well, you know, maybe the reason he keeps driving it is the hopes that the people at the company headquarters notice it and go, damn, we need to build something as good as that, okay? And why they haven't torn the damn thing down yet to see how they could build something as good as that is beyond me. Perhaps they have. I'm sure um, they have, Dad. I, I'm sure they have as well. But it, you have to know who your competitors are. You have, you know, and if, and if some of your competitors are relatively young players in automotive, you still have to take notice and you have to figure out what it is that they're doing. Now, let's face it, they, the, the, the Chinese manufacturers have so much government support, that's what allows them to be able to produce things at a much lower price point than what we can in this country. Um, but that doesn't mean that they should be able to produce so much higher quality stuff than what we're able to produce. Especially as Ford's struggling on the quality front, struggling to get adoption of their EVs. And I just find it fascinating that the CEO is out there driving around in one of his competitors' vehicle. Another really, you've got to be kidding me, Dad, that ties back to Ford. This is the market right now for Ford Bronco Raptors, the vehicle that was previously selling significantly over MSRP. There's one dealership that dealership that in Stamford, Connecticut, that yeah. has 27 of them sitting on their lot right now. Uh, just 27? Just 27 <laughs> at one dealership. And these are the Bronco Raptors. Look at this, Dad. MSRP 93,000, dealer discount 11 grand. Like this only, what was it, 12 months ago, eight months ago, even a year? I mean, these were selling above MSRP because you couldn't get your hands on them. Ford made a bad bet. 27 Bronco Raptors just at one dealership. So, so are you suggesting for just a moment that, well, you can get your hands on one. And if you do get your hands on one, you should be able to buy it at a significant discount. And any dealer that says to you, oh, no, there's there's, there's a $40,000 market adjustment on these. Well, uh, that must be the podunk Ford dealer that doesn't have another Ford dealership around them for 100 miles and thinks they can get away with it. It, it, it just goes back to building what people want at price points that they can afford. And at a certain level, you saturate the price points that they can't afford. And, and, you know, I mean, Ford's gotten paid, but their dealer hasn't. Yep. And, you know, and, and, I, and I hope what we should do, hmm. if, you, if you will indulge me, is you should bookmark that page. And then let's look next Tuesday. Okay, and see how many of those they still have. We actually, Dad, looked at that exact page about three months ago, and there were 17. 